Hello. Welcome back, everybody. This is Holly from Holly's Pandorium, and I have a very, very fun guest that I have spoken to before, and some of you may have heard of him, some of you may not, but I want to welcome Jay Bachochin here. Thank you for coming, Jay. I'm so excited you're here. Well, thanks for having me on again. And that's right. I I, I shouldn't be well known because I like to fl fly below the radar. Yes, you do. Like do. That is so true. Like that is true. That's my personality. Yes. So he's got a lot of information about a couple things to do with the paranormal, but I will let him share his story because it's really fascinating how he wound up where he is today. So take it away, Jay. Give us the history. How did you get into the paranormal and when, when did that all start? Let's see. Let's date back into the 70s when I was watching the creature features, the black and white. Yeah, I'm dating <laughs> myself here. But, you know, hey, you know what? Everyone starts somewhere, right? Exactly. And um, I was always the uh, the odd sheep in my family, you could mm -hmm. say, um, while everybody was interested in everything else. But that, I'd be that kid in the summertime in the basement, you know, during summer and waiting for Godzilla versus King Kong to come on. Right. And everyone else is playing you know softball or riding bikes and everything i just i was kind of that uh you could say nerdy pasty kid for sure um but uh that's always been my passion and you know i always say you can't change the the stripes off a tiger or you know the spots off a leopard right right I mean, we are who we are and um i've always had that fascination with anything uh supernatural not just paranormal but supernatural mm -hmm. Going from you know the movie monsters, you know were werewolves, right? Uh, like the Wolfman, the creature from the Black Lagoon. Um, but then I started hearing about the other real monsters um, later on, like uh, the Loch Ness monster. Mm -hmm. And um, I was always had the fascination with UFOs. Uh, I, I definitely had a few sightings when I was a kid, and um, you know, and again, it was a mass sighting with me and my family so i know it wasn't just me right who, who just loved anything paranormal right and um so i've always had that fascination with that you know as far as uh when the ghosts were kind of coming along i mean again in the 80s you know the ghostbusters right and uh you know who who didn't want to go out and busting ghosts and, and start right. looking for stuff like that exactly but it wasn't until 2000 six um when me and my wife were on our honeymoon on the east coast and we actually it was you know near, it was near october uh, near halloween and mm -hmm. we were in say we ended up in salem and of course it was really big halloween and they had the outdoor ghost tour we never went on one okay but I, i'm like you know we we're watching uh, ghost hunters taps on tv right a lot and um i'm like yeah let's 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 go out and it was kind of cool it was about 50 people just walking around, kind of a historical site, you know, trying to shoot uh, your camera for orbs and stuff right. like that. And uh, when we got back, I said, you know, I want to do this, but um, I'm more doing it because what you see on TV is not always real. I mean, come right. on, let's just face it. We're, you know, we're suckered into it, but uh, it's all paid sure. advertisement. You know, they got to keep us excited to coming back. Right. How, how much was truthful back then and uh, right. taps or ghost hunters uh, was the first original paranormal TV reality show, mm -hmm. um, which really captivated me. And now it's just saturated with everything. Um, True. But um, so we started doing that. Me and my wife formed a, a team called the Wisconsin paranormal investigators. Cause I am from Southeast Wisconsin and uh, we went out and our, our mission statement, I don't want to say our slogan, but our mission statement was to hunt the truth. So that's to seek the truth, to seek answers, to go out there and to find out if what we're really seeing or what you're reading about or what you've been taught about since you were a kid with Casper and, right. and watching Patrick Swayze and Ghost and Ghost right. Hunters, what's real. Right. And uh, so I've always been that truth seeker more than... Um, you know, you, we were just talking about being, uh, being well known, right. being a TV celebrity, being this or that, and I always wanted to stay, like I said, below the radar. Let me find those answers for myself and for like-minded people that want to talk to me. Sure. Um, so we did that from like 2000, early 2000s. 
seven until about 2013. And we, we did the, uh, the cemeteries we did, you know, we put up a website, we were getting people's request, um, to come investigate their business or houses. Right. So we had the DVR set up and next thing you know, I had a team of 10 people. Wow. And, you know, I felt like, yeah, exactly. And at that point it was kind of like, wow, we've really got something going. Um, but just as soon as we got into it, so did everybody else. And again, it just became oversaturated with everybody being a, a paranormal investigator or a ghost hunter. Right. And, um, it kind of lost its luster a little bit after a while after doing what I call the pay and plays. That's like going to the Ohio state reformatory. You sure. pay to go and investigate it. Um, you know, we have caught some really odd EVP, some pictures mm -hmm. um, over that time. But at the same time, in the, in the back of my mind, I'm always thinking, you know, what, if this is a pay and play and, and you want to get some good evidence, you're going as the place provide that good evidence that we you know so that when we put it on there it gets more people interested to in going and right the wheel goes round and round i'm not saying that's how it is right but that but that's how i kind of feel i'm like this is we're just investigating what everybody else says is haunted okay right maybe it maybe it is maybe it's not but what's the truth and that, that's what i'm saying is after a while it kind of lost its luster with with me not that i've lost interest in ghost because I was one of those that always thought outside the box. I wasn't the, the I don't want to say sheep, you know, everybody mm -hmm. following the same thing about what a dead person is, or I'm sorry, what a ghost is, is just a right. dead person when, you know, could it be, you know, a living person, but we're just seeing a crossover in this weird fabric of time that's crossing over. Right. And again, I don't know, but that's kind of how I was approaching it. And so I kind of lost that part of it just because if I didn't agree with everybody, you know, with that, with nobody knows, right? Because I guess if everybody really knew what ghosts were, it would no longer be paranormal. It would be normal. Right. We'd be able to identify it. So I know I'm long winded here, but I'm going to get into what I do today. That's okay. And uh, since I live in Southeast Wisconsin and I'm a truth seeker, not a ghost hunter, but a, a truth seeker. Um, we're just, I'm about a 15 minute drive from, uh, the famous or infamous Bray road in Elkhorn, Wisconsin. Right. If an, anybody knows what that is, I encourage you to look it up. Uh, this is now dealing kind of with, uh, cryptids. A cryptids is an undiscovered animal. Um, if we can call this an animal, but what the reports have been on Bray road have been this upright seven foot upright canine right you know you think of a werewolf but um werewolf is something that would change from man you know into an animal right um, this was actually the beast of bay road was coined by the late great linda godfrey and she passed a couple years ago right and, and actually was my friend and mentor during the beginning of all this and um so we would be patrolling bray road and some people would call that um, uh, was it legend tripping? Um, you know, where you're going looking for these urban legends, right? Because you can't get off Bray Road and poke around because it's all privately owned farmland. You have to have a respect for that, right? So I, and I call it just patrolling the roads and everything, sure. And uh, so our patrolling over time led us into the Kettle Moraine okay. in Wisconsin. Now, the Kettle Moraine is 55,000 square acres of dense wood created by the um the um in the, the ice that, that made the great lakes i should say okay with the icebergs retracting and um it actually goes up about 100 miles through the state of wisconsin and if you looked at it on google maps you'd really kind of look at that going okay there's just a small grove of trees it, it's immense um but we ended up there after seeking the beast of bray road and I remember this on October 19th, 2013 is kind of where my life changed um, with what I heard out there. And um, I always say I'm not an outback jack, but I can identify some animals. And even though we caught something that sounded like a cross between a person and a simian type monkey. Okay. 
or an ape making this sound was really strange and we could not find any known animal sound of indigenous nocturnal or daytime online you can go find sound boards of every type of sound a deer will make sure every type of sound an owl will make and that there was my hook in right. what i'm doing now because mm -hmm. people said well all right you're looking for the beast of bray road you're looking for this you know this upright canine and all of a sudden bigfoot came across the radar now i haven't mentioned bigfoot once since i started speaking here correct um bigfoot to me and i've heard of bigfoot i've seen the patterson gimlin film i saw it way back in the early 70s and mm -hmm. uh, serious monsters the movie and i always thought it's eh, a guy in a suit and there's so many people out there looking why why hasn't there been a body discovered right so just it's a like fair question it's a yeah. fair question right just like with whatever you would um whatever you would say the word bigfoot it is the butt end of a joke you know you can't say it without the ridicule right you can't even say sasquatch that it's, it's a t tamer way of saying bigfoot but bigfoot stay away from that you know because right that, that's a, a big punch line, you know and um that's when after hearing those sounds and not being able to identify it i started going out to that same area mm -hmm. over and over and over again thinking okay people are saying possible bigfoot because i did record just a good snippet i had a really bad crappy infrared um digital tape right camcorder that i would carry around with my with my ghost investigations i happened to have with me that night and just seeing or just hearing what i captured which was again minimal we heard like let's say five different type of vocals but only caught one and that's what intrigued me to keep going back because a few people heard it and they said well you're in the woods it's bigfoot obviously if you're in a an old uh, 1930s house at night it, it's a ghost because it's an old house sure um you know if you're out in the desert and you see a light in the sky obviously it's a ufo um and th that just goes with you know with uh what location you're on and what your beliefs are so right yeah i started going back out there in the same place and uh you know this will this will be this will add up to what i did with some of this footage um i had some very just very weird experiences out there and that's even going out there with my wife on a hike during the day mm -hmm. in, in february i can could, I could tell you dates there's a february 4th 2014 mm -hmm. and it was I, we found these huge prints that my wife just kind of walked by. We were, it was like foot and a half, two foot drifts of snow. We're making new tracks and right. it was still snowing. Right. Uh, by the way, my wife was just going out for recreation, not right. for Bigfoot or anything. Right. But she was just tagging along with her husband because, you know, it was just the thing to do. Right. And uh, after seeing those, there was all of a sudden no denying that me being a truth seeker, trying to be skeptical to debunking it right i couldn't and i still have those photos and i can still show these photos to people every day and they can't believe they're real yet i was in their presence right and that's kind of where my journey kind of took off in 2013 till today was uh looking for what i started out with thinking was just a uh, you know an ape we haven't caught up with yet right an, undis an undiscovered ape we haven't caught up with yet so in 2000 was that 2019 i released my first documentary in my first five years of the kettle moraine and everything that i captured i could go into every single one of them but it's it's on amazon prime uh the first one's called finding jay i took all my documentation i did all the interviews i did all the editing i was a one-man band of putting this together and it wasn't to be on the radar and to make money you don't make money off amazon i can tell you that right uh, and it so it wasn't for that but it was me uh trying to tell i guess the world this is what's happening to me in wisconsin i don't care anywhere else in the world you know right. california 
uh, Kentucky, Ohio, you know, you just start naming all these hot spots of where Bigfoot's supposed to be. Doesn't matter. I'm talking about here in Southeast Wisconsin. This is what's happening to me. This is my story of my first five years. And it was going to be just kind of a mic drop because producing a documentary is over and over. That's it, not what I want to do. You know, I, I'm, out, I'm out seeking the truth. Right. So um, then I still had more to tell. <laughs> so it was kind of funny. It was three years later. I put out a second documentary, even though I said I wasn't going to do it. Right. So much that was happening while I was making the documentary that I'm like, there's lights out here too. <laughs> not, not just Bigfoot, not rocks thrown at me, but orbs of light. Yes. You know? So if it's coming from a, a ghost perspective that they're the will, will the wisp or um, spirits, orbs, um, if you're into UFOs, those things are aliens just creeping around out there in the right. You're looking for Bigfoot. It's, you know, it's Bigfoot turning into an orb of energy. So no longer it's an undiscovered flesh and blood ape. Well, it is, but it can transfer into energy. Right. So, so many weird things out there. Right. And that was uh, my second documentary, Beyond the Kettle, Finding J2, is also on Amazon Prime. And um, again, I was going to drop my mic. But so much has happened since my second one, my second one too. So, and that that puts us up to where I am today. Right. Uh, still going out into the kettle moraine and um, just observing. I never say I'm a big footer. It's like I never said I was. I never said I was a ghost hunter. I never said I was a ufologist. And I'll never say I'm a big footer or a squatcher. I'm a truth seeker who likes to hike in the woods. How about that? Gotcha. Well, and I have to say this is one of the most interesting parts about Jay. So when I discovered Jay and I watched his films, people typically connect Bigfoot and Sasquatch stories with where I live in Washington. And the state of Washington and the state of Oregon are synonymous with Bigfoot and Sasquatch stories and sightings, even California. I mean, there's tons and tons of reported sightings and footprints and fur and all these different, you know, signs of, of some kind of creature or some kind of something. And so what I appreciate about what you did is you took the time to carefully track what you were doing. And just like our mutual friend, Al Santariga, you're systematic about doing things like he is. And so I really sunk my teeth into what you were doing because yes, it's a documentary, but it's also just a guy sharing what he saw and what he heard and what he experienced. Yeah. So that's, that really spoke to me because it wasn't sensationalist in any way. It was very down to earth and it was very connectable because for someone that's never had any experience with a Bigfoot or Sasquatch si situation, other than what you've seen on, on the news or TV, um, it kind of puts you on your heels. It, it puts you in awe. Now I love, I want you to share the story about when you were hiking with your daughter and what she saw that she brought to your attention. Uh, which daughter, my older daughter or youngest that we both have had experiences. So uh, my first documentary was with my four and a half year old daughter. And yes. Then, that one, that one. Okay. okay. Cause I do have one that happened with my oldest daughter in uh, part two okay. uh, in part in part one i mean it was um she's four and a half you know these kids of mine i they're both you know, they're 16 and gonna be 13 so they're growing quick oh yeah uh, but uh, my daughter when she was about four and a half um i used to take my kids out not at night or anything and uh where you go in the kettle there are trails and people uh, bike ride and hike and walk and right. do all that so it's like i want my kids not to be uh not be introduced to nature and just being out in the woods correct um so i took uh my youngest daughter um and you know again little little girl little legs short hike i mean we're out for about 45 minutes during the day and we're on our way back this is in february so the um the trails had a lot of um uh when ice or when the snow melts and then freezes again becomes kind of a slippery icy surface sure and on our way back we're about 150 yards away uh, from my vehicle couldn't see the vehicle yet but we were making our way back and we kind of stopped and she's like uh we we're on a real slippery part too uh on the trail 
And she's like, Daddy, pull me around like ice skating. Because she was kind of into ice skating at that time. Right. And so she'd kind of grab hold of my side and I'd kind of walk and she'd kind of skate around and everything like that. And just as I we kind of do a 360 once or twice, um, all of a sudden something caught me, caught my attention to my right. Now we say like a like a T-Rex with the you know the movement, the movement. Yes. That's what yes. we do. And because this was February and everything was brown, nothing was green. Um, right. I'm looking through some standing pines, and I can see about a about 80 yards from where we just walked, kind of doing a, a horseshoe. Correct. Something there caught me there, and as I turned to look at it, um, the only thing that I, I saw was like this auburn shape. Now. I, I can't say it was on all fours. I can't say it was bipedal. I can't say it was behind two trees, right. but whatever it was took up a lot of area. Right. And just as I looked at it, it moved like a blur. Right. And that was the craziest thing I've ever seen. And when I say like a blur, um, do you guys have flies out where you're at? Do they oh, bug yeah. you out there like they do here in Wisconsin? Oh, sure. Do you have a fly swatter and you're about to smack that fly and you smack it, but you realize you didn't get it? Right. It, it moved that fast. Right. That's what this did. It um, it it moved, but it, when I say a blur, because it moved so fast to the left that it left an auburn blur. Right. So I knew, so I knew it moved, and that right there was kind of a disbelief. Um, again, this was uh, right around 2014, 2015. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get the date. Right around 2000. 15, I believe it was in February. Okay. And, uh, and th that's important because I was searching or looking for Bigfoot. And Bigfoot right. to me was an undiscovered ape that just Neanderthaled around. Right. And that's it. What did I just see? I'm right. like, all right, this is new. This is processing to me. And um, my daughter was still skating around me, just oblivious to what was going on around. And this is during the day again. It right. was actually sunny out. Nothing ominous, and it was mid afternoon. Um, and it just occurred to me that I saw something. I know what I, I mean, I knew it was solid, right? But it moved that quick. That wait a minute, whatever this thing could move that fast, could come by and snatch my daughter, right? I mean, I, I don't care if I had two AKs wielding them both hands, if it could move that fast, I'm vulnerable, right? And um, I just kind of uh kind of stopped what I was doing, took her by the hand, and we kind of just skated and started walking to the car, and obviously we made it to the car. But that that kind of messed with me a little bit. You sure. Because, again, you know, you're you're a man out there. Well, I'm a man. And, you know, men, we, we don't get scared. You know, we, we right. handle the situation. And, um, you know, like a mother hen, I'm father rooster or papa bear right. uh, with my daughter, and I felt vulnerable. And I think that kind of... Uh, you know, it kind of messed with me a little bit. I think I hung up my backpack for like a month. I'm like, I am not going out. I don't care what it is. I don't think it's an undiscovered. I think it's something else, which is, you know, definitely kind of terrifying. Um, well, yeah, because that, that was really shocking because just that whole experience of, did I see something? Well, wait a minute. Yeah, I did. Yeah. What, what did I see? And not being able to make sense of it and then thinking, if it can do what it just did, what else can it do? Yeah, 100%. And there, a lot of people were saying that from the ghost side that maybe Bigfoot is just a screaming banshee in, in the woods and maybe Native American related. Um, and, and and I didn't want to, I didn't want to really hear that, I guess. Kind of like yeah. when you're doing ghosts, the, the ghosts were just people that have passed on. That's all it is. People right. didn't want to hear about time travel and right. this or that. And when I was out in the woods, I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, no, I mean, it's not a banshee. It's just a flesh and blood, you know, hide and seeker, you know, the best hide and seeker of the world, you know, being out there. And I didn't want to believe that. And um, after seeing that, I think that kind of put me on a different level of what I was experiencing out there, you know, because we were experiencing lights, but they were more like Twinkerbell lights. They would just kind of like flash, you know, they weren't right. orbs, but they were just weird. But you know, after seeing that uh, with my daughter and then all of a sudden starting to see orbs 
which, you know, I wear a body cam, you know, I wear audio. I try to keep everything concealed on me. Right. And, um, you know, of course, no matter which way I'm looking, I'm never going to capture it. <laughs> and which I, I guess is kind of maybe the universe telling me, hey, you know what? I, I'm not out here to I- expose it, to get the holy grail shot. Right. Uh, to be able to make documentaries, be able to come on podcasts and, right. you know, say, Jay is right. They are there. He's got the proof. You know what? I know what I saw. Right. And I know there's a lot of people that are like, well, you know, did you see this? Um, you saw it move, you know, with around your daughter. Did you go over there to look for prints? Well, you know what? At that point, no, I didn't because I was more concerned about our safety. Right. But, but even so, so I go over there and I don't find prints. Does that make me a liar? Does that make me somebody who is believing his own lies? Right. And I, I don't believe that. I gotta, got to be able to trust your gut. So yeah. I'm always telling people that are asking me all these things that if you're interested in finding those answers, don't listen to me then on the podcast or my documentaries. Go out and discover it for yourself. Right. You know, and uh, it's what I, I try to encourage people to do. Get out there. Find that truth for yourself. Don't don't rely on, on YouTube videos that are floating around of if that's Bigfoot or not. If you're interested in it, Believe me, you know, when you're going out there, I didn't name my first film Finding Jay because it was all like narcissism about me. <laughs> it was actually a play on Finding Bigfoot. Right. And um, it really was. Instead of going out, going around with big lights and everything and, and trying to find Bigfoot, I said, and I started doing this during my early uh, 2014, 2015. I'm like, you know what? We're never going to find Bigfoot. But if we sit around here, we're patient enough, Bigfoot will find us. Right. So therefore, that's where it came to finding Jay. So it could have right. been finding Holly. It could have been right. finding Bill. You know, right. it could have been anything like that. And so it was kind of a, a play on the word from sure. a Bigfoot perspective saying finding Jay. Mm-hmm. You're going to find me out there. That's, right. that's what I'm hoping. Gotcha. But uh, of course, you know, the... Uh, film itself have a two-way meet, meaning because as you're watching me in the beginning and how I am at the end of the film, you, you can kind of see the progressions of what I kind of go through as I have these weird experiences, you know? Yeah. So you're going on 11 years now of doing yeah. this type of research and this truth seeking and just to cor- clarify for people listening and watching this later, um, do you believe in Bigfoot at this point? Do I believe? In, you know what? The whole believing and knowing, because I've heard people say this before, where I'm a Bigfoot believer, and then you're going to have people that have had experiences saying, I'm a Bigfoot knower. And a Bigfoot knower is somebody who's actually had a sighting of a Bigfoot no matter who it is, they can say, you can say what you want. You know, you're talking to the people and they're like, I know what I saw. And it wasn't a bear. Right. It wasn't a person. It, the only thing it could resemble is what everybody else is talking about. Bigfoot is huge, right. hairy and everything. So that would be a knower. A believer is just somebody who uh, watches uh, people talk about Bigfoot like me and, sure. to, you know, be able to uh, divulge some, evidence some footprints and some other weird encounters and everything um like that and right. or watching documentaries or watching youtube um so do i believe in bigfoot um no i'm i'm a knower uh last march i had a daytime sighting plain as day it was a freak snowstorm at the end of march i'm mm-hmm. out there with my friend Bryn. she invited me up to her, her property, which is adjacent to where I've been investigating for the past 10 years at that okay. time. And um, we were out there for three and a half hours. She's showing me these amazing tree structures. Um, you know, a lot of people, you know, want to say, well, trees always fall in the woods. Mm-hmm. Okay, we get that. Uh, these things were like put up in trees and you couldn't get vehicles and equipment to get out there. And it's in the middle of nowhere. Right. And then you got to ask yourself, why would, you know, 20 guys with ladders and everything just try to put that right there. Right. None none of it makes sense. Anyway. So we're out there just looking, documenting. I'm looking around. They're all standing pines. That's where we're at. So that means um, 
the pines are just like kind of groomed almost th- up to 30 feet and then they become you know the, the trees okay so that's how i'm kind of looking at my whole view over 100 yards and um we're out there for three and a half hours and we're getting ready to leave and i always have a hand signal when, when i come in i always raise my hands like this and it started in 2015 when i'm right. like i have nothing in my hands and i do this okay and then i wave at them and then i hear the raccoons and possums laugh after i do it you know, I do it. <laughs> Uh, but but I do that. I also will do that uh, when I'm leaving. Right. And I and I did that at this location, saying, "All right, guys, um, you know, I'll talk to them friendly. I'll see you in in my area, maybe right. next week." All right. And I did that in probably a minute or two after I did that. I'm facing this way. My body cam's facing this way. It's my torso facing right. this way. Um, and I have my head turned. To the right and Bryn was kind of behind me to the right facing me okay and as i take a right there it is i mean it was my best guess 60 65 yards away but i could see the head the shoulders it was pitch black is mm-hmm. what the figure was this is during right. the day right Greek snowstorm, so there's white snow everywhere, uh, dull right. brown trees everywhere. This thing was as black as can be, and it skated by like it was on skis through all that. Right. That Anything that you'd be tracking on would be hard. And I saw it just for, a, I'm going to say two seconds. I saw it, and it came from nowhere because I have a whole view. Right. Like a, it came from nowhere, got, got behind like two or three trees that were just kind of blocking and I'm still waiting for it to continue, and it, it it wasn't there anymore. Just for those two seconds, I saw it, and I didn't record it. I'm facing this way. Like I said, oh, cos- no. cos- cosmic joke, right? Cause right, I'm of like, course. Torso's facing this way. Right. I'm, I'm looking like this. And then I, tur- well, then I turn right when that happens. Right. But, but the event's over. Um, it was... You know, besides, you know, getting married and my kids being born was pro- probably one of the single uh, best moments in my life. Um, and, you know, when it, when I did see it, I actually gasped and kind of like that, you know, the, you know, it takes yeah. your breath away. I don't, I don't, I never gasp. I can tell you <laughs> that right now. I don't gasp, <laughs> but, but I did, I did when I, when I saw this, and right. it, Almost, and sorry, because as soon as I start talking about this, it, it almost brings me to tears when I when I did see it. And it was almost like this privilege, and I, I don't even know if that's it, because, you know, I'm feeling that it's much more connected to the woods, more so than a cryptid or anything like that. So now it's kind of like this, um, uh, kind of this nature spiritual walk, yes. if you will. And um, so lately I've been getting it more in touch with, um, you know, some local uh, Native Americans um, from Potawatomi uh, elder I talked to, a Ho-Chunk elder I talked to, um, and actually interviewed because, yes, there will be a, a part three. Um, and I am looking at more the the Native American indigenous to Wisconsin nice. of what, you know what their their beliefs are what their right. take is have they have experience has any other tribe or nation had any as well and again i'm focusing here in wisconsin not everywhere right so it's more of a personal thing like that but it is uh it's definitely affected me a lot more to where it was like i knew everything that i did documentaries casting my footprints seeing these weird beady eyes having rocks thrown at me all these classic behaviors of bigfoot mm-hmm. all came to a there it was i saw it was like that was it yeah kind of like you know you could almost drop your mic at that time but just because i saw something i think was maybe the first step um at least that's what i'm kind of hoping um uh, because i've always my main goal for the past several years is making contact yeah. I don't know how that is. And I think it's just I just want to know what they are, what their origin is, you know. Right. 
I want to know those things. And it's really for me right. more than anything, because, you know, I, I can tell you that a year ago, I sat down and had a cup of coffee with Bigfoot and he told me everything. <laughs> and exactly. And that would be, that would be the reaction. Right. That I would be, if, if I was to explain that would happen, that's what happened. Right. You know, um, so therefore I already know that I'm not trying to do this for that purpose. Right. I, I'm doing it as a, as a personal, uh, where it's going to affect me personal. And it would be really good to come home and show my wife actual footage to saying, see, your husband is not crazy. <laughs> well, I, but yeah. I, I appreciate the way you're describing this, Jay, because I find that people that are experiencing, whether it's, a ghost experience or a Bigfoot experience or a UFO experience. There's something that affects everyone when they're dealing with the paranormal or the supernatural. And that is, Oh my God, it's real. It's an awe inspiring moment because all of the legends and stories suddenly become a possibility in reality. And that's enough to make anybody stop and take a minute. You're, you're looking at the situation and you're trying to pick it apart and dissect it and debunk it. And there's a part of you that's going, I can't debunk this. This I know what I saw. I know what I heard and I know what I felt. And I've heard a lot of people say that when they have a Bigfoot experience, it's an experience. It's not just a sighting. You feel yeah. something. There's a connection in contact with them. Yeah, and there there is. That's exactly what you were saying about um, having that experience, and it's it's personal. It's, yes. Um, you know, to be able to find that truth for you, like I said, right. I, I I couldn't come here and tell you that I sat down with Bigfoot and had coffee, and you know, right. his name's his name's Daryl, and uh, yeah, he's got three brothers, and no, <laughs> I I would be yeah, I'd be I'd be laughed out by explaining any of that, and right. um, so to be able to have those experiences that experience was more of exactly what you said, that right. there is more to our reality. And if more people were doing this and finding their truth, their reality, right? you know, you'd be surprised on what, you know, the veil has been pulled over our eyes in, in everything. I mean, we're talking the whole, you know, when we talk about ghosts and, and UFOs and, you know, Beast of Bray Road or Bigfoot, you know, everybody wants to put them in their own box and just say, right. I, I only investigate ghosts right. or I only look at UFOs, you know, put them all in one box. Um, right. there, there's something that's covering the veil of our reality. And that's honestly, that's what I believe. And I think, I don't want to say if you're open to it, because um, there's a lot of things I'm definitely, I'm Bible based. I, I pretty much do not, um, you know, close my eyes and, and, and try to bring aliens down with my mind you know i always say if i'm going to pray i'm praying to jesus and that's right it. um but what i'm saying is open is saying that uh when i go out there i'm always i always feel like i'm i'm, I'm protected and i always right. ask for prayer and protection um but with that i'm not trying to open up any you know doors of being open of demonic or right you know that type of things because some people have said bigfoot's probably you know probably demonic and I'm like, eh. I don't I, again, know that's know, true. I think knows. the fear of the unknown is what people try to quantify things that they don't understand. And it's immediately evil if it's not known. Exactly. And, and that's a yeah. very antiquated Puritan view of life, which is unfortunate. <laughs> if I don't know what it is, it's bad. It must be the devil. You know, it's like, well, okay. Well, how, how about now. this? How about this? <laughs> right where you're sitting right now. Yeah. Now imagine turning off everything and you have no light and you're sitting in there. Right. Uh, you still have that. Okay. All of a sudden, now you are in the dark, even though you're in a familiar spot. Right. Um, it's still the dark, which then becomes the unknown. Correct. Which, which will bring up our primal fear. Right. Comes to that. So. Yeah. Right. It's interesting, but I agree, and I do believe that there's a lot of crossover. There's uh, at my dentist's office, believe it or not, one of my dental technicians showed me some orbs on her phone last month and said that, you know, her parents have property here in Washington and they have this big blue orb that follows her mom around and that they are positive that there is a Bigfoot on the property. They own 15 acres and 
they've all seen it. They have all seen this particular Bigfoot. But apparently whenever her mom goes for walks, because she loves to be out in nature and walk around the trees during the day, you know, she's not going out at night with a flashlight looking for stuff. It's just during the day, taking a daytime hike in the woods. And this blue orb follows her and it's massive. I'm hoping I can get a copy of it and share with everyone because it's the biggest orb I've ever seen. And what on earth is it doing there? And how is it, you know, the photography angle of it itself is, is awe inspiring to me, Yeah. but it's like, there's so many things like this that people are experiencing. And I'm so glad we get to talk about it here because it's, it's good because I can tell you exciting. right now, the reason why I'm smiling is because at the end of one of our hikes in January of this year, um, I was hiking with uh, David and Michelle and Sherry. There was uh, four of us. Mm -hmm. And um, so much happened. I, I call it the chaos broke out in the dark. We oh. always hike. I hike in the dark. We only use low red light to get around. But yeah, the yeah. Path. And sure enough, she saw a blue orb. Oh, oh really? Yeah, yeah. I love yeah. that. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And, and that's really cool because so much. What I saw was this red tadpole type squiggle of a, a laser red but it wasn't like a laser pointer right because it was it was on void you know usually the, the laser is going to hit a surface right or wherever this was like right next to me i don't know what that was huh. so was so many weird light orbs come into play which yeah. then made me begin to think well you know bigfoot's out here i know that it, you know as bigfoot a protector of the woods because it only seems to be you know in the woods yeah but then i'm like what would bigfoot be protecting the logs the trees the rabbits the bunnies and i'm like maybe maybe bigfoot is out there as the muscle the security uh protecting something bigger that we haven't even thought about so which could be the woods itself as an its own entity i don't know yeah so there's i have a few friends that do what you do and there is a philosophy that i've heard from a few of them and that is that they believe that bigfoot actually protects us from dog man and other creatures like that that they've been out several times at night yeah. and had literally felt like they were being corralled by bigfoot to move in a certain direction and again it's it's hearsay because i wasn't there when it happened but um and again and, and, they're, and they're right the one thing that I always say about that, about saying, like I said, I'm a truth seeker, hiker, observer. Right. I'm not a, I'm not a squatcher. Right. Um, but, you know, even with that, we're going to have our own opinions. Right. And all just like in the ghost world or the UFO world or wherever, we're all going to have our own opinions because, well, we're all individual, right? Right. We're all going to have them. And you can always come to your own theory, just like mine. I told you I was Bible-based. Um, if I'm going to, if I'm going to read my Bible, believe my Bible and take it for truth, I really can't nitpick what is, you know, what, what I believe is truth and what is, uh, that's probably stretched. So let's let a scholar take that out. Right. And, and, and the thing is, and I, that's kind of hard to do for me because it's like, Hey, you know what I always say, if it's a Jesus died for my sins on the cross, do I take that literally or yeah. Or do I need to uh, break that apart to really what it meant? No, I believe that was meant to be taken literally. Right. And, and if uh, the the Bible's written this way, you could say by men, but through God, that um, Noah's son was 800 years old. Was he really 800 years old or were they exaggerating and he was 80 years old? Right. But, you know, they threw an extra zero on. So I'm going to say 800 years old. And if that was the case, now we're going out into the woods with, you, you you've heard of have you heard of the nephilim through the oh, book yeah. of enoch oh yeah that, that came down mated with the uh the fallen angels mated mm -hmm. with the women that became a hybrid right and um you know so what if these hybrids are living to be 800 years old right well so the bigfoot i saw a year ago maybe that was one that's been around for 700 years that's why right. we're not finding the bodies they're not dying right um the reason why i'm saying this is because that's my faith that's what i believe that's what my opinion is sure. and then you've got other people that are no jay you're way off it's a flesh and blood ape that's just really good at 
hiding and here's the proof, but there's never an expert or a proof or a body. Right. It's going to be our opinion on what we research. So I'm sticking with my truth. Right. That's why I always say, go out and find your truth. If you want it right. to be, uh, you know, a cryptid, you know, unmapped, undiscovered animal, so be it. Then that's right. what that is. But for me, I, I think it's more of um, the way these things move, right. uh, the way they can just disappear, the way they can make you feel nauseous when you're by them with infrasound. Right. And it's happened to me several times where you're totally fine and all of a sudden you just want to lose your lunch right there and you don't right. know why. And right. just as fast as it comes, it goes. And it's happened with several different people, meaning these beings, and I don't call them creatures or monsters, I don't know what they are, right. but um, whatever they are, they they do have these special supernatural attributes that we don't have. Right. You know, I mean, what, what if they're out there, uh, now we go back to a Star Wars, the first one, you hope. Okay. With Obi Wan, uh -huh. I'm like, you know, Bigfoot could be standing right on the path, and you could be walking, looking, and and he's just going, "This isn't the Bigfoot you're looking for." And we, <laughs> and, and we can't, and we can't right. see them. So they're not really cloaking, right? They're just either enveloping us enough to want to throw up, or what we can't see, or we hear a ringing in our ears, or right. or whatever. Um, that's where I'm at with with what they are. Right? Uh, yes, yeah, that's, that's me. But I don't expect everyone to be like, oh, well, Jay says it. Right. You know, you know, this other guy said it's, you know, just a flesh and blood ape. You know what? We're all we're all out there seeking the same goal. So right. I don't knock anybody. And that's why I like to keep below the radar. I don't right. I don't like all the nagging. So speaking of cloaking, you have an experience that you had with one of your daughters also. Can you share that? Oh yeah. Oh, that was, uh, well, that was actually a year ago, January. I'll okay. tell you 2023 was shaped up to be a pretty good year. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, a pretty good year with experiences, but this was January before my sighting and we went to a same area. I I'd like to get out there, uh, here in Wisconsin. It gets, well, let's just say it was, um, negative negative six when we got out there in the morning cold all right cold you know you bundle up with your thermals and everything and uh bring out camping chairs right. and we just found a spot in the dark and um just waited and then the sun starts coming up and then we'd you know get up and kind of walk around in a little base camp and uh there was three of us it was me and my oldest daughter she was she was 32 at the time or at the time she's gonna be 34 sorry maddie um, <laughs> never tell a woman's age. And then my 35 year old nephew at the time. And as it got light, we decided to, um, you know, kind of walk around. Now it's, now it's a beautiful morning. Sun's coming up. You can see everything. It's still, there's no wind. And my daughter was all of a sudden stepped back and, you know, we're looking through these trees and she could see his path. She said, she saw it was like a, almost a snap picture of what looked like a big the back of a she said of an ape it looked gray and it was in between these two trees she didn't see it moving right she just kind of saw like a snapshot of it okay. and it was there but she could totally pick out of what she said there there its butt was right there i could see the back of its foot right she was getting so descriptive right what she just saw now we've all been there right even in, in um ghost investigations where somebody's like did you hear that kind of like ray from ghostbusters and right. you didn't you didn't hear it but they did and you do you believe them well they're good friends or relatives of course you believe them right but you still didn't see it so you got to take it a second hand right somebody who could have misidentified something anyway right. so with my daughter i'm like really she's like yeah right uh, let's let's walk there it's about 40 yards do, 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 do. Finally get up to the spot. I'm looking on the ground in the snow uh, for any prints or anything. Don't see anything. We're looking up in the trees. Don't see anything. And all of a sudden she stops. And she's like right there. So ahead of us, another 40 yards is where the path met the tree line. Beyond the tree line, a little bit in there, she was seeing a Bigfoot looking right at her. She could totally see it. 
Oh wow! And all of a sudden, I'm like, and she's not moving. She's like a like a pointer dog, right there. <laughs> Right. And I said, don't take your eyes off it because as soon as you blink or take your eyes off, it's gone. I know that. I've heard right. stories about it. Right. I get my video on uh, my iPhone going and I said, I'm going to put it in your hands. Do not look down. I'm just going to yeah. put it up and you get it. Do not take your eyes off of it. And then she's looking. She's like, oh my God, it just blinked. You know, she's raising it. Uh. So she's now recording and I'm looking over her shoulder because she's studying this thing. Yeah. All I see is trees. That's it. Wow. I, I, I'm seeing nothing, nothing. Okay. It's like, but she's still talking. It just blinked again. I'm like, what are you looking at? Oh my gosh. Yeah, right. I couldn't see it. I couldn't see it. <laughs> so as I'm still like looking and she's still filming, um, my eyes start to go up more through the tree line through uh, to, closer to the path. Right. And all of a sudden, there's one big tree right on the path going into the tree line, real big tree. All of a sudden, I see what looks like um, Frodo or Harry Potter in a the cloak hood move behind the tree. I was like, "Whoa!" What I, was I that? I just saw that. I just saw it. There was yeah. No, there was no denying that. And mine was a little closer, so mine would have been about thirty yards ahead of me. Right. And I'm like, mental picture. I, you know, I my, I was too far away that and too distorted for right. my body cam to to pick anything out. Plus, I was almost behind Maddie, right, uh, where her shoulder was. So I'm getting all, of course, right. You know, cosmic joke. You know, I'll never right. be able to record something, right. Um, and I'm like, oh my, God, I was just so enthralled. I saw it move, and I know what I saw. It was, right. it, it wasn't like a cloaked head, like the predator, head, shoulders, arms, or whatever. It right. was almost like, um, mm, kind of like you know the Pac Man ghost that yes. Pac-Man. It right. was kind of that shape, but it was right. distorted and it moved right. behind the tree. And the reason why I know it moved behind the tree is because whatever was in front of it looked distorted. And as it was going to the tree behind it, it didn't get distorted in front of the tree. So like that's this intense. Side step. Yeah. So then it gets better. Well, my nephew, he is off to uh, my left about 40 yards going at the same angle because he was trying to look at what maddie was seeing right he was trying to get a different view of it and uh we start walking up to that point of where i saw it and he walked up and he is a flesh and blood kind of guy he is right. hey take me out there show me a bigfoot show me a dog man show me a gray alien right don't, show me something i, I don't want to see ghosts i don't want whatever but he goes what i saw and he goes i can't tell you what i saw jay all i know is it was this weird distortion that was behind this tree that right. shot from that tree through those br that brush, you know, it was like, uh, you know, uh, six foot tall brush right. went right through it, went across the path into the other part of the woods. Right. And it didn't make a sound and it didn't break any branches and it moved so fast. And where I said, where, and he pointed to the tree and that's the one I saw that stepped behind. The wow. Tree. So he saw the after effect of it going and i didn't see that so the way these things are moving is just phenomenal um, right and, and again i can't tell you what that was people would say well you saw a cloak bigfoot and i'm like well i didn't see a bigfoot i didn't see a cloak i didn't see an uncloak to reveal it was a bigfoot right I, whatever it was was a cloaked something correct and that moved like a blur through the woods which is incredible because especially when it's cold out Things are crisp. They're going to crack. They're going to creak. They're going to snap. There's going to be sound. Exactly. And, and Unless it's, and I agree with you, and I know where you're going because I think the same thing. Yeah. Unless it's all that, this isn't the squat you're looking for. You know, that we, <laughs> that we, don't, we don't even hear it. Right. It's like, right. You, you, don't, you can't hear me. And right. Just knows. Who knows? But I didn't mean to cut you off there, but no, I, I agree with you. Yeah. Well, I think that's one of the other interesting things that a lot of people have shared is the silence that comes with them. Because anytime you've been out in nature, and I've said this for our, our, our listeners and viewers that are in areas that aren't heavily wooded, it's hard to understand what a bizarre thing it is to have someone not understand what silence in the woods really means. It's so off-putting. You're, you're like, where's the crickets? Where's the frogs? Where's the birds? Where's, where's the stuff going on? What's happening? 
it's very different. It, it's very it, different. And the thing is, and the theory behind that obviously is that if there is an apex predator around, predator around, everything will stop. Well, I can see the birds that are high up in the tree feeling threatened. Maybe definitely the low ground animals definitely would feel fear. Right. Cr crickets. I don't know. I think mm -hmm. crickets don't have a mind and they just will chirp. Um, mm -hmm. So to understand that, um, that's why, because I've experienced exactly that to where uh, I'm going to date myself. I don't know if you remember the uh, Get Smart Cone of Silence. Uh, all right. It's this big cone that comes over a con somebody that has a conversation. You can't, you can only hear each other, but you can't hear outside of it. Yeah. All right. I did date myself there. But, uh, <laughs> Um, but, but with that, uh, I've been out in the woods to where it felt like we had, uh, the cone of silence over us because not only did we not hear any birds, you know, any squirrels rustling around, no wind, no ambient noise. It was right. like we were in a cone. Right. And it was during the day and we're like, I almost wanted to say, do, do we sound muted as right. we talk? And it was the weirdest thing because you didn't feel any different. You know, you didn't have any pressure or, and it was during the day, but like, okay, well, you know, we're kind of just studying a little bit. And then we walked, uh, you know, maybe about five or 10 feet and all of a sudden the ambient noise came back. And what I mean by that is the noise that you don't really pay attention to, not even the wind or, right. or the brush or anything, but just all of a sudden it sounded like life again. I don't know if that makes any sense, but yeah. again, so, you know, how are we targeted, you know, by right. an infrasound for losing all that sound or the animals? And that's how come I was bringing up the apex predator uh, where everything goes silent. Like, don't move right. apex predators here. Crickets, again, it's, it's hard for me because it's like I'm thinking of a little insect <laughs> that really doesn't really care if it's right. Like, living it's just doing right i don't i don't know but then again if you ever have a cricket in your garage and you're trying to find it <laughs> if you do get close to it it does stop yeah so there might be a little truth to that but still it's that whole uh cone of silence that goes over you when right that happens yeah okay so for everything that you've done so far what are you most proud of um Honestly, I think my tenacity of not stopping seeking the truth. I think that's my my greatest out of out of anything I do. Um, right. Um, you know, I, I've been invited a lot of places to to do um, public speaking and um, like guest appearances that way. Um, I've I have two documentaries out that I'm very proud of. I have my family supporting me 100% of whatever I do. Um, but it's basically not giving up. Right. And I, I think that's that's my biggest achievement of being doing this for 11 years. Right. Not nonstop. And we're not talking once every six months I go out or once every three months. It's once a month. You know, I'm out there almost, you know, four times a, four times a month. Yeah. Um, except for... Um, in case there's a, a holiday or a family birthday right or deer hunting because you know i like to keep my head you know and, yeah no uh, kidding so, <laughs> so I, I, I like to get out there as, as right. much as i can just to be with uh out in nature and right. um, out with friends because that that's the true journey of this whole thing it's not right it's not bigfoot it's the it's the seeking the truth and the journey that you're gonna go on to take it so um that would be my Honestly, my greatest achievement, 11 years, I'm still going. Nice. <laughs> that is awesome. Well, I sure appreciate you coming on tonight. It's been great to visit with you again. And I cannot wait to see number three of your documentary. So do you have a target release date on this by chance? You know, many people have asked me that. Nobody's ever been able to leave without really knowing. Um, no, <laughs> I, I don't have a target date yet. Um, and honestly, that's part of the stress, kind of like a term paper in high school. If you remember, <laughs> they give you two weeks to do it. You start at the two days or the day before it's due. Right. Um, 
And so that's kind of like, I don't want to say that's like that. If I put a date out, no matter what, it's like, all right, I got to hit that date. That adds the the stress of it. Um, being a one-man band, working for a living, trying to pay bills, my own bills, um, being dad to the teenage kids here in the house. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, trying to have a life. Once I get absorbed in this, my, my wife will tell me about that. Is once I get involved in this, it's kind of a nonstop. This, this is it. I'm out hunting the truth, you know, on the weekends maybe. And, you know, every night I'm working here uh, right. to getting it done. Um, so with that being said, I can tell you it will be 2025. Okay. I can't tell you when. Okay. That's fair. Hey, that's at least a year. That's, you know, that's that's a roundabout date. So well, it fair. is. And, and, and if you think about it, every documentary, which I've only had two, has always had a three-year span in between. Oh, well, that the makes sense. The last one I put out, it was in 2022. 25. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't designed that way. I think it's just... You happenstance. Know, that's it yeah, well, it's happenstance because you have a lot of people that are <laughs> popping out documentaries left and right, um, which is good for them. But I'm about... Um, I'm, I want to put out the best quality that right. I do the quantity because I don't care about the however many I have. I want it to be educational more than anything. Oh, that's what I wanted to ask you. I don't think I yeah. asked you this before. So your first two documentaries, can people buy those? Oh, uh, yeah. You can actually go to my website, jbachochin.com. I have a storefront. I actually do design. Uh, I've got t-shirts on there. Nice. Um, yeah. So it's... Uh, and you can buy my documentaries. I've actually have two that I self-produced and directed, filmed, and got all that. Then there's also one that I was a producer of, but okay. I didn't do the editing or anything called The Hidden Truth Okay. about the lacrosse drownings, which actually kind of ties into David Plotty's Missing 9 or 411, right? Yeah, <laughs> The Missing. Okay. Um, and uh, so it's... Uh, that's something else to take a look at. You can see a younger version of me. Gotcha. So we filmed okay. it in 2010. Okay. Well, 14 years ago, I was such a young lad. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Well, I am so glad you came on and we'll have to catch up. And I definitely want you on here when you do your release. So Absolutely. that we can share it with everybody. Absolutely. Believe me, there's a lot of Bigfoot communities out where I'm at and we love the information. And I know that people love to hear about Bigfoot in other areas. So I, yeah. I love that you've got Wisconsin covered. That's awesome. Somebody's got to do it. Somebody's got to do it. And that's a funny thing because yeah. it's like you, you think of all these other states and there's so many researchers and uh, oh, yeah. celebs that are that live out in these areas and everything. And right. then people say, Wisconsin, that's full of cheese and the Packers. And I'm, right. and I, and I'm a diehard Bears fan. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Well, my wife's a diehard Packer fan. So I always say during football season, we're not married. You know, right. We're, we're rivals. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so it's like uh, there's not much going out in Wisconsin, but there is. Yeah. And I'll, I'll be the first one to say it for me. There's really something out here. Don't know what it is yet. And I'm hoping my journey will take me to that point. Right. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks. Thank you again. It's been great to see you. And I look forward to the next movie. That'll be awesome. Definitely. We'll, well, stay, in, is, we'll stay in touch. Like yes, we absolutely. Do. Well, this is Holly from Holly's Pandorium and Jay Bichochen and Thank you for staying with us and watching all this information. And I hope you have a wonderful day and keep the thumbs up and the follows going because that helps the channel. We appreciate you very much. Thanks a lot.